Changing minds one thought at a time Greetings and welcome to the Change Your Minds Online Empowering Women series. How are you doing today, Jessica? I am doing awesome, Akina. You know, it is beautiful, beautiful weather here in New Jersey. I am loving it. I have my windows open. I'm wearing a tank top for the first time. And, you know, I'm sitting here and thinking about how it's going to be really great to go to my beach house for the first time this weekend. I'm super excited about it. And what do I see on Facebook? But What's trending right now, Wildwood, New Jersey, a 3,500-pound great white shark spotted 10 miles off the Jersey Shore coast. That is right where I live. So I am. Um, I'm, I might be reconsidering my ocean plans this weekend. But it is a beautiful day. I'm so excited. It's finally warming up. Um, I see some pictures of some friends in Canada where it's snowing, so I'm just doing a dance of gratitude for our beautiful weather here tonight. How are you doing? I am great, and I am super excited about tonight's show. You know, we have a fabulous guest. She is a business mentor, development and funding strategist, a grant writer, author, and speaker, and she's going to be talking to us today about how to write a juicy business plan in seven steps. Not just a regular one. She's going to be talking about a juicy one. So I can, I'm can. i looking forward to that. So without further ado, we will have Ms. D. Lynn Hawkins. How are you doing today? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. Beautiful. I'm just fabulous, thank you. And I am so excited to be with you on the show tonight. Uh, I love what you ladies are doing, and I just want to say thank you for having me on. Oh, it's our pleasure. You know, without without further ado, I am so excited to talk about today's topic because I've never heard a business plan be described as juicy before. Tell us about that. What does a juicy pl- a business plan sound look like? Well, a juicy business plan is one that is infused with the energy that the author, the writer of the business plan, puts in it because it's about the work that they love to do and it's about the um, people that they want to serve and it's about how it is that they're going to do that. And, you know, if you talk about the work that you do and it's work that you're doing from the heart, that's some juicy stuff for you to talk about, right? I agree. I agree, yes. Well, same thing with a business plan. When you have that same kind of passion that you can infuse into your business plan, it becomes a juicy business plan. It's something that people want to read, and it's something that they can get involved in. And I have to honestly say that when it's written from that perspective, it's written differently. It doesn't sound like the uh, textbook prescription of a business plan. It actually sounds like someone is interested in doing something in a business that serves people to the highest degree. They know how they're going to do it and and they know how to look at the monetary rewards for the work, the service that they're providing, the service or the products that they're providing. And I actually am so excited whenever I get an opportunity to work with someone to write their business plan. And um, I've devised a way to do it really easily, doing it in seven steps. And in those seven steps, um, it actually takes you from beginning to end to um, the review, wrapping it up in a in a bow or, you know, making sure that the right graphics are on the front of it, which could be the bow. And um, then you have something that you can work with. And, you know, a lot of times, too, people think that writing a business plan is something that you do and then it goes on the on the shelf. It's in, a, it's in a binder and it's on a shelf or it's bound and it goes on a shelf or in a file cabinet or in a drawer and that's the end of it until the next time you decide it's time to look at it. 
but I actually help clients to create their business plan with the pieces of it that are treated like living documents. And when I talk about living documents, these are the documents that you actually, the parts of the business plan that you actually work with in order to help you achieve your goal. Because the business plan is written with a bunch of milestone goals. And those milestone goals are what help individuals to focus on what is it that I want to accomplish, how long do I want to set up to see that accomplishment occur, and when I accomplish it um, as a milestone goal, I want to celebrate that so that I am now ready and know that I am now ready to move on to the next milestone goal. And I have this thing about goals. Um, Call me crazy, but goals are uh, very masculine. I mean, it just sounds that way from the word goal, masculine, hard. Um, You're like me, your hard bodies who look good, feel good. (laughs) And, you know, not to distort anything, but goals are hard targets. And those hard targets are sometimes hard to move beyond. When they're milestone goals, a milestone is combining the milestone feminine um, energy of the word with the masculine goal. You actually allow it to be a 360 degree um, accomplishment that you can stand inside of. And think of it as a circle. You can stand inside of it and you can really feel the accomplishment that has been achieved in reaching that stage, and then you can easily step outside of it to continue the journey. And that's the difference between a goal, a hard goal, versus a milestone goal. A milestone goal is one that is set that upon accomplishment, you really do want to acknowledge it, and then you've already set the next one to move to. Sometimes even with a hard target goal, you set the next goal, but it's truly a stop and then start again versus a a move to, recognize, and then move on from. And you see the fluidity there of the milestone goal versus the hard target goal? Well, I'm going to take that as a yes. And I'm also going to take that as a yes in that you can still hear me. (laughs) And I'm going to go ahead and move through the seven steps because these are very key steps. Um, Yeah, thank you. I'm excited to hear you. Sorry about that. My phone, I didn't realize, um, looks like it it, it froze on mute. But, yeah, thank you for for sharing that with us. It's really, um, you know, it's really great information to see those goals. And, you know, one of the things I always say is that our kind of little goals that we have, they really can be very fluid. They can change on a regular basis. Sometimes, you know, something can come up and it may seem more urgent or pressing or things we need to just deal with. But there also are those, like, bigger goals that we're working for, like you call those milestone goals, that we, those things don't really necessarily change. I mean, they can, but um, for me, I know I have my milestone goals, and sometimes, you know, things will come up, and I recently relocated, and I've put some of those milestone goals not really aside. They're still there, but right there was more pressing things to deal with in the moment, but those other goals aren't really going away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And which is why it's so nice to have the the combination of milestone and goal. Because, you know, growing up in the business communities I grew up in, you heard milestone and then you heard goal. And very seldom did you hear them combined as milestone and goal. Now, one of the things that's key that I teach and in building your business plan, we also set those milestone goals. And the first step to creating your business plan is actually to set those milestone goals, milestone goals like um, how long would you like it to take before you complete your business plan? 
So the first step is actually determining your plan of action. How long would you like to take to write your plan? Um, How will you do it? Will you do it with help? Will you do it, you know, DIY, do it yourself? Or will you do it and go ahead and pay someone to do it with you or for you? Now, I always encourage individuals to do it with help. Doing it yourself, you run into a question, and that question may turn into a roadblock that actually derails your entire um, opportunity and your outcomes just are totally not met. But if you do it with help, you've got someone who can be a champion for you to get it completed, someone who's a resource to answer questions, someone who is available to give you advice on the questions that do come up. And so the first step is to define your plan of action. And it's really key because Suppose you need a business plan in a week or suppose you can do it a little at a time over the course of, say, seven weeks and really go through each step in these seven steps that I'm going to talk about and complete a step a week. And some weeks will be um, a little more, and I'll, I'll say intense, but it's only going to be intense to the degree that you lose sight of your ultimate outcome, which is to complete the business plan. And so I'll talk a little bit about more about that too because one of the ingredients that you want to add to this defining your plan of action is know that it will take a bit of fortitude and it will take a bit of discipline and determination to get it done. And that's another reason why you want to pretty much, in my opinion, do it with help. So the second is um, to define your table of contents. And you say that's the second step is the table of contents? Yes, because there's a lot of meat in the table of contents. One is to research what type of table of contents is going to be best for you. If you're doing it with help, that person may in fact already have a template table of contents that will fit very well for what it is that you want to write. Um, If you're doing it yourself, you're going to have to put in a little bit of research to find a table of contents that suits what you want to build. If you're a nonprofit organization, having a table of contents that works for the for-profit business isn't really going to work for you. You have a couple of other things you want to think about and make sure that your table of contents helps you to remember to write about those things. If you're a for-profit business and you're um, products-based, well, a consulting business plan is not going to work for you. And if you're a consultant, a product-based business plan is not going to work for you. So the table of contents is a pretty key item. And um, I know for me, with the way that I teach writing a business plan, I have all sorts of templates. And I actually spend the time to find out what, which, which one would fit best with the client that I'm working with. And the table of contents that I start with is always full detail. And what I mean by full detail is that not only is it the table of contents, but there are explanations for every item in the table of contents because that helps you to once again think about what you might desire to write about in the written information. Now, there's one other thing that I kind of put in this item number two about the table of contents, and that is about the executive summary. Because if you've ever seen any table of contents, there's a few things that are very similar no matter what type of table of contents or what type of business 
you have a table of contents that fits for, whether it's nonprofit, for profit, product based, or um, service based. Um, this, there are certain elements that are common among business plans. And this one is typically the first thing that you see in the business plan, and it's called the executive summary. Now, the executive summary is something that you want to make sure that you write it last. And let me explain that. While you see it at the beginning of a business plan, it doesn't mean that that's the way that you write your business plan. So you remember being in school and, and all the textbooks that you ever read. Where's the summary? It's always at the end of the chapter. Right? There's a reason for that. It's a summary. It's summarizing all the detail that you just read about. Well, the same thing applies to your business plan. The summary is a compilation of summary details out of the meat of your business plan. So that means that you have to write the meat of the business plan first, and then you write the executive summary last. Okay, so after that, you get into the area that I call the business. You're writing about the business. And in the business write-up, you're actually talking about what's the story around this business. And I think this is the difference between how some people teach how to write a business plan and um, examples of business plans that you see that um, put you to sleep before you get through the, fir the first chapter. And that's because it's not written like a story. With a story, you know, you've got a beginning, you've got a middle, and you've got an end. And so the first couple of chapters of your business plan truly are telling the story. What is this business? How is it formed? What's the vision of the business? What's the mission of the business? What's the structure of the business? And will it stay this structure the entire time of it being a business? There are some businesses that start out as sole proprietorships that later on become formed as a corporation or an LLC. And that's the, those are the front end of the business plan is where you actually have that discussion. And with that, um, you're actually telling the story about the business. And then you get into the fourth section. And that's where you actually talk about the products or the services of the business. So you've talked about the story around the business, why it came into existence, and who you're going to serve. And um, now, in step four, you're actually talking about the details of what the business provides. If it's products, um, you're actually going to talk about what it takes to develop the products. If they are products that um, I have a client who makes um, makeup. She makes the lipstick. She makes the powdered foundation, the foundation and the powder and the um, eyeshadow, the eyeliner. I mean, all, all of this facial makeup, lipstick, she makes herself. And she talks about the formula that she uses to make these products. And then she gets into how the ingredients come together. And there's a cost to the purchase of the ingredients that she then has a cost to make the products. And then in the sale of the products is where she talks about the markup so that she then has her net income. And I have another client who has 
And this, these are just examples, but I'm hoping that these examples give you a clear enough picture about what these different steps actually entail. And so this step around the products and the services for a service business actually talk about the services. Um, I have just very types of businesses, but I'll take, for instance, the service business of uh, one of my clients is a Reiki master, and she does group trainings because she certifies people in her own methodology of Reiki. She has clients that she sees herself that she um, provides Reiki to. She also does um, emotional freedom technique. And so she's listed out all of these services, the benefits, the features, and the types of clients that she's able to help. And then, you know, she's listing out the different fee structures for the clients. And she's listing out um, how she intends to grow the service practice over the course of time. And that's all of the discussion that goes into the fourth step about the products and the services of the business. And... You know, for actually both clients actually talk about the health benefits of u- using the products on one end, the health benefits that the clients receive, and the services talking about the health benefits that the clients receive. And so, you know, you're looking at full circle with these products or with these services, what do they entail and who utilizes them, and how do they benefit from them? And then that takes us to the fifth step. And all of this, I'm I'm actually formulating all of this because in the very end, you'll see how a lot of small stories are brought together to be an overarching story. And so we're on step five now, which is actually the step that talks about the management. And this is where the business owner, the entrepreneur, gets to talk a little bit about who they are, what they bring to the table, how they are, um, have gotten, how, what their journey was to get to the point where they are managing as the CEO, as the president of this company, this company. And it also gives them an opportunity to say how it is that they're utilizing their team, whether it's employees or outsourced individuals or um, volunteers or interns. This is the section where the management and operations of the business are actually talked about. And this is where the owner gets to interject the details around the dream of growing the business. You know, every business plan starts at a place and tells the story in the uh, place and time that's called present. And what it does is it gives, from the present perspective, a forward look. So you're telling the story around what what the business is, what the services or the products are, and then who's managing it, who's it be over, having oversight responsibilities, and then from there, what the vision is for the growth of the company. Will you hire more people? Will you um, give an opportunity to interns to help to do things that basically help to grow the business. And this is also where you talk about something that is very key for me because it's legacy related. And it's the conversation around exit strategy. And so you've got, you know, in this section, what's the legal 
connection? Do you have a, an attorney on retainer? If not, do you have uh, an attorney in mind that you have a connection to that you know that if something came up, you would be able to reach out to them? What's your accounting situation? Do you have an employee that does the accounting? Or do you outsource that to a bookkeeper or an accountant? Um, nonprofit organizations actually are required to have either an enrolled agent or a nonprofit accountant to actually do their accounting services or at least their annual reporting. And so you want to talk about all of that in this section. One of the big things for me in this section is the exit strategy because this is where you get to talk about, you know, in five years or 10 years or 20 or 25 years, what would you like this business to be? Is it something that you anticipate growing to the point of being able to sell it? Is it something that you're looking to pass down as a family legacy, a family heirloom? Are you grooming someone in the family to take over the business? Um, if something happens to you, what happens to the business? Uh, if you have a partner, if something happens to you, what happens to the business? If something happens to the partner, what happens to you and the business? And all of these things are key elements that need to be thought about as you're writing this business plan. And then item number six, this is a juicy one. And I get a lot of people who are either very excited about this part or they're petrified. Or they just convince themselves that it's all a sham and they can't do it. But here's what I say. When you are looking at the sixth step, which is building your financial projections, you are doing just that. It's a projection. And there are some people who said, you know, this can either validate or invalidate my entire thinking about my business because if the numbers don't work, it's telling me my business doesn't work. And that is so far from the truth. What it's actually going to show you is a validation of all of the opportunities that are available to you because the numbers tell a story. And when you think about the numbers telling a story about how you would like to grow your business, it actually brings clarity to your thinking about how you might grow your business. And I'll give you a great example. This was so fun to have experienced. I was working with a client who was an acupuncturist who was writing her business plan and saying, Lynn, these numbers just don't work. I don't know why. I'm like, well, first of all, if you're charging $25 an hour for your acupuncture services, what's, the, what's being charged in the marketplace? Well, I don't know. Well, this is part of what this research that I talked about really helps you to come in alignment with. What are others who are doing what you're doing charged? And what are their credentials? What's their background that gives them, you know, that puts them in a place where they're saying the value for the services I'm providing actually do come in line with this number? And what we looked at was the experience and the services that this client was providing were so undervalued that it didn't take a lot to double in the first year her income and quadruple it in the second year because there were so many things that looking at the financial projections revealed to her that she had no idea could even happen. And that's one of the things that I love looking at as part of building the business plan. And then number seven, step number seven is wrapping it all up. How do I pull all of this stuff together? 
Well, you go through each of the sections of the business plan and you make sure that they read like the story, the energy, and the heart that you want to be talked about, that you want to be received by the reader. And then when you get to the end, you've got the meat. You can now go through and pull out those important salient points to then put into the executive summary. And then you're pretty much done with the exception of all of the great stuff, you know, spell check and formatting, because you really want it to have the appearance that it's a finished work of art. So you want to put the images in it that depict the work that you do, the products, the services. You want to put the images in it that reflect the management philosophy. And you want to put the images in it that will also be appealing to the reader. And once you've got all of that done, that seventh step of wrapping it up is complete. And guess what? You've now got a juicy business plan. And you have something that not only are you proud of because of the revelations that you've gotten in the writing of it, but the confirmation that you've gotten about how you might be able to grow your business. And something I tell a lot of my customers about too, all of them actually, is that there are certain things that you do in your business that basically evokes the universe to support you in. Writing your business plan in the methodology that I've just described is one of them. And that basically is the seven steps to writing a juicy business plan. Wow, that was awesome. I mean, you gave us wonderful, wonderful information that we can implement right now. Thank you so much. You are quite welcome. And, you know, it's funny, I wasn't quite sure how much time I had, so I wanted to make sure that I got everything in, and then, you know, there, if there's time, I'm definitely open to having more of a conversation around any of these items that you might have some questions about or anything. Well, we are at the uh, end of the show right now, but can you tell us your email address and your other contact information so they can reach out to you and ask more questions? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I would love for you, I'd love to gift your audience with a copy of my book. It's called How to Write a Business Plan Without Pulling Your Hair Out or Slitting Your Wrist, Seven Steps to Getting It Done. And I'd like to gift anyone who goes to my website at um, p3academy.com. That's P as in purpose, three, the number three, academy. Dot com, And you can scroll down the page and you'll see where you can put in your information and you can actually download this ebook that has all of the information that I walked through and additional detail so that you can, in fact, do it yourself. But I want to say, too, I've got a, a workshop coming up that is the Do It With Help. And you can find that information right there on the web page as well. Wow, you have such a wealth of things going on right now, as well as a free gift for the audience. That is wonderful. Thank you for offering. Absolutely. For you, Akena and Jessica, I'm just so grateful that you are doing the work that you're doing, making such a difference, empowering women to be the women that we've been called to be since before we were born. Um, and it's it's an important job. You ladies have picked up the mantle, and I'm so very proud of you. Anything that I can do to help your audience, I'm just grateful to be able to do. Thank you. Do you have a closing thoughts for the audience tonight about business plan. Well, I do. You know, a friend of mine said once, your your business plan is like the vision board for your business. And if you've ever done a vision board and you 
believe in the energy that can go forth in the universe, then do your business plan. Do your business a favor and yourself a favor by having your business plan. Well, thank you so much, v for being on the show tonight. You have just given us some wonderful nuggets to take away. And, you know, if if anyone was touched by something that v said today, please find us on changeyourmindsonline.com. The show is also going to be on TuneIn, Podomatic, Stitcher, uh, SoundCloud, YouTube, and, of course, iTunes. Jessica, do you have any closing words for us tonight? Vila, I just want to thank you for all that really fantastic information. You know, uh, I, so many of us, right, are entrepreneurs listening to this call tonight, and I you know Akeen and I write business plans all the time, and I was avidly taking notes. I was a quiet tonight, but I was listening and note-taking, and I'm excited to put those seven points into action. I love that um, vision board for your business. I never really thought about a business plan that way, but it's a really great way to think about it. But thank you for sharing so generously with us tonight. You're so welcome. Well, you know what? We always end our call at Changing Minds Online the same way. You know, we tell you guys, our audience, we love you. You know, we do this for you. Um, We're so grateful for you to listen, that you listen to our calls, that you allow us to guide you on your journey through really just changing your life, changing your mindset. Um, Make it a really powerful week, and we are excited to be on our Sunday night call, and we'll see you then. Take care, everyone. God bless, and have a great week. Thank you. God bless everyone. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.